Hey, what's up fellas? This is uh, Digital Alex here. Uh, today I'm going to just run some of my wins and uh, we're going to have a clan chest opening video at the end. Then I have a, a magical chest opening. Uh, I started a second clan and in this clan I basically just have like about 25 people right now. We're still not to a point where we can open up a, uh, a clan chest. But it's still a very good clan. There's a lot of people that uh, you can practice battles with, that will donate cards, uh, people you can donate epics to. Uh, I have a wide variety of uh, trophy levels. So starting all the way from uh, Arena 1 and going into uh, a few legendary Arena players. Uh, this, is, uh, this clan I basically started because I had already enough people in my second one and I wasn't able to fit everybody into that first one. I almost have to like boot people to have people. And I don't necessarily like want to boot people, uh, you know, I want like... Because I invite everybody one by one. And if I invite them and then I boot them, it, I think it sends a wrong message, you know. It's like, I think people are just going to be getting a little bit suspicious of my activities. And then they're gonna so it's like it's nothing against a person because I had I had a buddy that wanted to get into the clan but I had no space and I was like look man I don't know who to boot because I just started this clan and I you know it takes a lot for me to get people in there and then I can't boot them so I have to wait to see who's inactive and then I can make room so I decided to make a second one and I think he's a little bit upset with me now but that's <laughs> what do you, I mean what can I do you know I just anyway I'm gonna get into a few of the battles today. You're gonna see two Lava Loon wins, two separate games, then an RG player uh, that was pushing a, uh, a Witch Royal Giant deck. And this guy is playing a minor deck, uh, but I don't think he, he knows that he's playing a minor deck uh, because for, from what I understand, I don't play a minor deck. I play like a small chipper deck. That's kind of like a control deck now. Um, I substituted the Goblin Hut, which was the chipper card. But from what I understand from minor decks is it has to be very low elixir. And this guy had a pretty expensive deck. I think he was a 4.1. So at 4.1, you can't get to the minor fast enough. Now, he has very good cards. He has a Lava Hound. No, he has an Inferno Dragon. He has a Valk. He has a Musketeer. Which uh, I think a musketeer goes into a uh, cycle deck. So I think even a minor, uh, even a hog cycle, a uh, mortar cycle. I think they all go in there. And but he he just he wasn't pushing it very very well. So at this point, I got his one of his towers down to 154, which is a lot. He's sitting on elixir. So like looking back at this game now, I'm thinking maybe he's not too experienced. Uh, I'm not like the best player. Um, I, I know not to sit on Elixir. I mean, I, if you get nervous in the game, I think that's what you do. And I think he was getting a little bit nervous here. Um, at this point, I just dropped another uh, Furnace. Uh, it wasn't to make it like a spawner deck, but I just kind of uh, just dropped another one just because I didn't have anything else to play. So at this point, it looks like he just gave up. So I actually end up uh, three crowning him. And, I mean, it was a very good game. Uh, I know he tried, and uh, it, was, it was just a good game. He played really, really well. So, the second game over here is the Lava Hound uh, deck. Uh, this guy is representing Trash with a Russian flag. So, I don't know if he's saying Trash Russia or just Trash players. I don't know what it is. So we wished each other good luck, which was fine, and uh, I've been trying to pick up uh, my uh, bad manner game. Uh, meaning like trying to eliminate it, because I have really bad manners when it comes to this game. I throw a lot of angry emotes and just try to like manipulate the players with the emotes, but I just like whatever, it's a waste of time. Because that's not really what gets you to win, it's how you're gonna play it. So he pushes a Lava Hound with uh, minions, which which is a good card, but uh, thankfully I had uh, a Musketeer and Arrows. So he clones his Lava Hound, which is, uh, which is a really, really good move. I put down my Furnace to soak up his uh, Lava Pups. And if you, like, as you know, clone Pups, clone cards, it just take one hit. And then when you hit them once, they, they go down. So this wasn't as bad. 
Uh, I still don't know how I got so much damage on his right side. Uh, if you look at his tower, it is literally half. I mean, 922. This guy has a mirror, he has a rage, he has an execution, and he has a witch. If I had a deck like that, I probably would play Lava Hound and Executioner, okay? And I would use the uh, minions for defense. I would not push, uh, he's just, he's playing very impatiently. He just wants to win quick, which is typical of RG, uh, Lava Hound uh, players. If you're running a Golem Miner deck, you got you got your chill on. You know how to play your deck uh, very slowly. You're a patient player. Me, I'm kind of like in between. I don't have the patience for a golden deck. I have patience for a chipper deck, but I just I do not have the patience for golem. Um, although I know they like they're really really good cards. Um, I'm not as aggressive of a player to play RG and Lava Hounds. Uh, if you rage Lava Hounds. Uh, this, of course, you know, Clash Royale is stem from Clash of Clans. If you drop haste or uh, rage on those cards in the game and you're looning, that's it. Everything in their side just goes down. Um, so at this point, we lock onto his tower with the Valk and then I throw a barrel. And as you know, that just locks the, uh, the aggro in the game. And we really took his tower down. Then goes his uh, second arena tower just with arrows. He's not gonna let me three crown him. It's not because he didn't want uh, me to get to, me to three crown him. It's just because he wanted more time to push his cards. He was so adamant that his clone rage and everything was gonna work that he just he thought he needed more time. So that's why I think he pushed his prince back. I don't think he really cared about if I three crowned him or not. This uh, this second player is uh, he comes out of China. I just I can't like depict his name completely but uh, it just says love in there and uh, he was pushing a much better deck he had uh, all air troops when he came to a lava hound um, he had a baby dragon he had an inferno dragon he had uh, minions balloon he had a furnace he had everything you need to push uh, air troops and actually yeah he does have a lava hound for a minute there I didn't so usually to those decks I if I mess up in the first push, I lose. I, I can't, I usually can't come back from, uh, from a screw up in the beginning. Uh, this deck, he, he had it a little bit too expensive. I think the Furnace and the, uh, the Mega Minion, not the Mega Minions, the Valk and the Minion Horde is what made his deck very expensive. And because I had a furnace, not to mention I was running two furnaces right now, that gave me a huge advantage over him because I was able to save arrows for when the lava hound comes, the pops pup, the pops, the pups pop, and I can throw arrows on him. So we got his tower very quickly. We actually just a clutch uh, prince over there, took his tower down completely. Essentially, this game kind of goes on. Um, and we're, we're gonna watch the rest of it. I don't, but I don't want to bore you. So at this point, he pushes a uh, he pushes a balloon, and of course, my musketeer uh, just with his cavalry, uh, with his gusto, just goes on to the other side, and uh, we 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 lose that tower. It's at one HP, but uh, we pretty much lost it. So he gets my uh, second tower there with his Valk. The best way I know to counter a Lava Hound, uh, an Inferno Dragon, I keep saying Lava Hound, is with the Skarmie. Uh, they don't have a lot of HP, so you drop a, a Skarmie or Goblins, it slows it down enough to where you, the, your, uh, your Arena Tower can counter it. So I was just keeping a lot of pressure on him. I only had uh, 27 seconds left in the game. Uh, I throw a Prince out there. It actually does enough damage for me to throw some arrows and the goblin barrel. So his uh, his balloon comes in again. I put down my uh, furnace for that. It completely distracts it. It does fine. Uh, I'm a little bit hesitant to do anything else here, but just play defensively. But because we do have uh, such a tie close game in, I throw my uh, my goblin barrel and uh, that goblin barrel actually uh, three crowns him. So that was, uh, that was a really, really good game. 
this fourth game is actually against a, uh, a royal giant. Now, uh, this player is a female, okay? So uh, you're like, okay, why are you singling that out? It's not a big deal. I mean, watching tournaments, I don't see a lot of female players in there. But what I notice a lot with female players is they have all female troops. And I was actually expecting that coming into this, like the, the user, the username I think is a, is, is a female. So, and that's okay. I mean, like I'm not singling her out just because she's a female. But what I do notice is like a lot of female players, they will play uh, female troops. Like, I mean, this one has already uh, a musketeer, princess, Valkyrie, witch, and she's pushing a royal giants with a, a bomber counter. So I'm not really sure like why that is, but I knew that going into the game, so I knew that I actually had the cards to counter all of her troops. Um, like that's the only reason I'm saying it. Like this was, so this game was actually to my advantage. Uh, so if you're a female player, I mean, as, as somebody, who who has a clan with quite a few like females in there i would advise you to create a little bit of diversity in your deck and the only reason i'm saying that is because i'm sure other players like me are noticing that a lot of females are using just female troops and i think i have a lot of favorite cards of mine that i play and it's a musketeer and a valkyrie um, they are female troops, and I mean, clearly I'm not a female, but the reason I play Musketeer is because it is the best air counter, okay? It is the best air counter. Uh, Valkyrie is the best, like, starting this game, the Witch would get on my nerves, okay? And whatever I played against the Valk, I just could not counter it. There was absolutely nothing I could do to counter Valkyrie. So I was like, I gotta put that card in my deck. So I put a Valk in, and I put a Musketeer in. So those cards have like been my staple cards. Okay, if you if you eat, there's a carb, right? There's always a carb. There's bread. That's I need these cards in my decks. Okay, so uh, I have six HP on the other tower, and I wasn't really too worried about that tower. I was actually just gonna play the left side the best I could because all I needed to do was throw arrows on the right side, and it wasn't a big deal. And I didn't worry about having arrows for a princess or the minion horde because i knew my furnace would do that now furnace is really good in this case in this game because it shuts down barbarians really well uh they travel in pairs so there was some value there actually too the furnace their six hp tower and the princess were both in one area and i think this player was getting a little bit nervous so we actually got some tower and at this point you see she's not even dropping anything i she had barbs on hand um i think she kind of froze a little bit and that's classic tournament gameplay so uh so that was actually a really really good game so that was really good to play against that girl um i wish there were more female players in the game i have just a few in my clan and they play really really well i mean i think i think when i was taking a lot of math and accounting classes well not accounting i was taking a lot of like csi classes there was always like one or two females and the rest guys. So, you know, it would be, it would be nice to see a lot of female uh, Clash Royale players. Now this guy is, uh, the only reason I left this game is what's gonna start happening towards the end. Um, so we're, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna narrate the game and then you guys will see what he's gonna do towards the end. Also at the end of the video, we're gonna see a uh, clan chest video opening and a super magical chest video opening. So, uh, so they were good cards. They got really, really good cards. So at this point, uh, he's running a minor deck. Now this guy has the perfect minor deck. Okay, he has enough defense and he has enough uh, troops to attack if his minor is not in hand. So he has a goblin gang. He has a princess. Uh, he has a fireball, which can counter two, three cards at a time. Uh, he can have almost a positive elixir trait, and then has a bomber which I don't really know what the bomber is for now that I think about it. So he's pushing a princess um, on his lane that he's attacking on. I played princess a few times, and this was earlier in the games too. You play the princess opposite lane, okay? Because that forces your player to go on that lane and to sacrifice one of his troops to go on that side. 
So I'm not sure why he was doing that. Uh, maybe he wanted to get some chip damage. So now he pushes his miner naked. Um, so he needs something to support that. So his princess, if it was on the other side, would have been actually a, uh, or, or even now would have been good. So obviously he's getting chip damage. So I put in a prince to get value. I didn't want to send anything else but a prince. Uh, prince got value for us. It got his bomber and it got his princess. So now he sends a, a miner again with a late log. Um, it's almost with a miner and log, you have to send them simultaneously. So now he's giving me value again. Okay, his princess was, he's using a princess to fight off the troops on the tower. So I got a lot of value there with my arrows. So now we have a, uh, a musketeer and the prince push. He throws a log on that. He has no choice. He's actually very low on elixir too. So I throw my barrel and my uh, my fire spirits uh, clean up the uh, goblin gang, which wasn't too bad. So now we're at 60 and he's at five, he's at 300. So now here is where all the magic starts to happen. He throws a log. My tower is at one HP, he laughs. Like, it is funny. Then I throw my barrel, and that takes down his tower. He laughs, I throw a thumbs up, and he says, good game. He says, good game, guys. He doesn't throw any angry emotes. He doesn't start raging. And I think that was very, very good manners on his part. And I wasn't gonna laugh in his face either. So I just said, good game. So this was the, uh, the crown chest that I got in my main clan, my second clan, we didn't open it up yet. So uh, I got a uh, 104 goblins. I got tornadoes actually, which I was gonna request for uh, Epic Sunday, but um, I think I ended up requesting golems. So I got tornadoes on my clan chest, which was really cool. Uh, at this point, uh, this was an arena nine or arena eight um, magical chest. So we got eight knights. I don't play it. Uh, we got 20 zaps. I got uh, 48 fire spirits, which are perfect against barbs. Uh, we got mirror. We got uh, a lot of dark goblins in both chests, actually, and uh, we got uh, two dark princes, which I I don't use. I really should make a deck out of it or something like that. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I will have a combats videos on my YouTube channel. Okay, I don't know where this video is gonna go. <clears throat> But a lot of you guys have been sending me videos, so I will put that, but I'll put it on my YouTube channel. So keep a lookout. Uh, I appreciate all the support you guys are giving me. It's really fun uh, just chatting and having your support. And you guys suggesting decks also. I mean, it's really, really cool that you guys are uh, making out some card decks and giving me some time to uh, practice them uh, with you. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will catch you in the next one.